If you're feeling at a complete loss when it comes to how to make money in your florist business, if you feel like you're stuck in that hamster wheel experience of creating beautiful designs, but you're not yet seeing the money roll in, if you feel like you are constantly questioning if you have what it takes to be successful and make money doing the work that you love, or you just feel like you're spinning your wheels and you're like, I wish somebody would come along and tell me exactly what I need to know in order to make more money as a florist. My friend, you're in exactly the right place. And I have been where you are. And I thought it could be super helpful if I put together an episode that talks specifically about the nine things I wish that somebody had told me, knowing these are the things that are gonna change the game for you and your business. And when I first started as a floral designer, I made the same mistakes that so many other flower bosses make. I was pricing my work way too low. I was saying yes to everything that came my way and it felt like an absolute drain to my creativity. And from a marketing and a sales point of view, I was throwing everything I could possibly think of at my business. None of it felt like it was translating into getting results, making any progress, gaining traction. And truth be told, I was barely making enough money to make ends meet. Week by week by week, I would have to make the decision of, am I going to pay the wholesalers? Are we going to pay our rent? Are we going to pay our team? I mean, very last on the list was, am I going to give myself a paycheck? I wasn't in love with the work that I was creating and I literally was scouring the internet going, what is it that I am missing? What is it that all the successful, profitable florists know that I don't? And if any of this feels familiar, I want to tell you you're in a very safe space. I know very few floral designers talk about being profitable and talk about actually making money, but that's what I wished more florists talked about. Because there's one thing to be really good at floral design and to have floral design as a hobby, but it's a whole other thing to take the leap and take the plunge and decide, you know what, I'm going to earn an income from this. I'm going to pay myself a wage from this. I am going to build wealth from this. So you're in exactly the right place if you are trying to figure out how to make real sustainable money as a florist. And I am the queen of learning how to navigate this experience the hard way. And I'm on a mission to make it easier than ever for ambitious, motivated florists to actually make money, build a profitable business, and build wealth. Which I know sounds crazy when you're in the midst of, I'm barely making ends meet, Kathleen. I totally get it. And I'm here to help you make more money doing the work that you love without burnout, without the exhaustion, and without the guesswork. So today I have put together and I want to walk you through my nine secrets to making money as a florist that I really wished somebody had told me sooner so I could skip past the really expensive and time-consuming and exhausting trial and error. And we're talking years, years of it, because I really don't want you to struggle for as long as I did. And being successful, having a thriving business, making money as a florist isn't based on luck and it's not based on talent. And what I'm going to share with you today, these nine secrets are nine lessons that I had to learn the hard way, nine realizations that completely changed the way I ran my business. And they really are the keys to you being able to turn your passion into a thriving, profitable, life-giving business. And secret number one is I want you to price like a pro. And yeah, okay, so let's be honest. I am the one that has my MBA. I am the one with the fancy corporate career. I am the one that went to formal floristry school, have all of my qualifications. But even with all of my pieces of paper, all of my very expensive pieces of paper, the minute I stepped into running my own business, the minute I had to put a price tag on my creativity, on my flowers and on my art, was the minute that I was confronted with my self-doubt, my fear and my scarcity thinking. And even though I walked out of flower school with literally the right formulas in my hand, I then went into my business and I was like, well, there's no way that I could charge that much. I'm just going to go and compare myself to what's happening at the grocery store. I was so scared, like 
petrified into my bones to raise our prices because I was convinced, 100% convinced that every single one of our customers was going to run screaming the other direction and that I would end up broke, homeless, and alone living in a van down by the river. Everything changed for me once I learned the term industry standard approach to pricing. It was like this turning point in my mindset where I realized, okay, am I part of this industry? Am I a professional or am I a backyard Betty? Am I going to price like an amateur? And this has so much more to do with our mindset and our self-worth than it has to do with any sort of magical formula. Because the math is actually incredibly simple, especially when you guys learn my super simple shortcuts. But I made pricing so much more emotional than it needed to be. And my self-worth and insecurities were so wrapped up and it was completely invisible. It's not like I was sitting down going, my self-worth times 1.76 is the square, like I, that, I wasn't even aware of it. I literally wasn't even aware that this is what I was doing. But I didn't know that I could make a very intentional conscious decision to just go, okay, pricing is simple pricing is straightforward. I'm either pricing to the industry standard like a professional or I'm not. And you get to decide. And this is where I will always remind you that so much of your success comes down to your mindset. So you just get to decide, am I going to price like a pro or not? And feel really empowered in your decision. And it can be that simple. Because the minute you recognize, okay, I'm going to price like a pro, you realize where the work gets to come in your business and understanding the power of building your brand and leveling up your marketing and streamlining your sales process to align with the actual value of what you provide your customers. And those are the things that fast track your growth, which then leads me to secret number two, stop saying yes to every client request. Now, if you're anything like me and you know that you're a people pleaser, <laughs> this one is also going to feel incredibly uncomfortable. And I was convinced, and again, this is me and my scarcity mindset, but I was convinced that I needed to say yes to every client request just because we needed the money. But it actually ended up doing the opposite in our business because the best customers value the entire experience that you provide to them. They're not just looking at the stems in your hand. They're looking at the entire experience from start to finish. So the ease of ordering, the confirmation of delivery, the quality of the flowers, how long they last, all of the little details that actually have nothing to do with the flowers in your hand. And the best clients aren't looking for a generic solution. It's kind of like you either could decide you're going to go and be the McDonald's of floral design and cater to a specific kind of audience, or you could decide that you're going to be like a two or three star mission and restaurant and you're very curated and you're very selective. And the kinds of customers that you're going to attract to your two or three star Michelin restaurant is a completely different audience than somebody who's going to go to McDonald's. And again, it all just comes back to making a very intentional conscious choice and navigating your own scarcity and your own internal dialogue and going, okay, what am I actually afraid of? If I feel like I'm not going to attract enough customers to my business, what am I making that mean? If somebody says I'm too expensive, what am I making that mean? If somebody says, I went with somebody cheaper. What am I making that mean? Because all of those scenarios are very normal business scenarios. They're not exclusive to floral designers. It's just that very few people talk about how important your mindset is when it comes to being successful as a florist. And heck, there's so little information about the right strategies that are required for floral designers in order to fast track your growth that we all think, oh yeah, this means something about me and my self-worth. I mean, I can only speak on behalf of myself and and so many of my clients, <laughs> because that's what we do. We all make it mean something about our self-worth, something about our ability to succeed. And I'm here to tell you that none of that has to be true. So this is one of those instances where you can do that self-reflection, that self-awareness and go, okay, if Kathleen's challenging me to not say yes to every inquiry that comes my way, what comes up for me? Where is my self-doubt? Where is my fear? Where is my anxiety triggered from this experience? Because that's going to lead you to so 
many moments of awareness and that's how you step into your next level. Which then leads me to secret number three. And this is the power of magnetic branding. And one of the things that's really important to remember when it comes to understanding the power of your brand is that this isn't just your logo. It's not just your business card, but it's the overall experience that you create for your clients. It's the vibe that your clients feel when they interact with you. So whether they're leaving you a voicemail, sending you a DM, sending you an email, or they're on your website, or they're consuming your social media content, your clients and your future customers are building a relationship and they're having an experience simply through those specific touch points. So what's the feeling that you want to create with your clients? Because that's going to be the foundation of your brand. And the more precise and the more considered and the more intentional you are with crafting that in your business, the more effective your marketing is going to be, the faster it's going to be for you to build trust with your clients and the easier it is for you to be able to get more sales consistently from those high paying dream clients. And I'll be the first to tell you that this doesn't have to be an expensive exercise. You can totally DIY your own branding and your own vibe, but this is so much more about intentionality and about strategy and about understanding the right levers to pull to make it easy for you as the business owner and impactful in your marketing so that the sales come faster. And if you want to learn my go-to strategy for building a magnetic brand, I teach this exact concept inside the Flower Boss formula. So I walk you through my six-step blueprint for building a thriving, profitable flower business. I give you my exact roadmap so that you can walk away with complete clarity, more confidence, and you know exactly what you need to do to build that thriving, profitable, successful florist business that you've always dreamed of. I'll leave a link to that program in the description so that you can get started today, dive in, and level up your business so that you can attract those dream clients and make more money as a florist. But the minute that I dialed in my branding, that's when I started to understand the impact of how easy it is to attract dream clients to your business. Because these were the clients that valued our experience, our expertise, and our creativity. These were the kinds of clients that valued ease and simplicity and professionalism and structure. These weren't the kinds of clients that were looking for the cheapest solution out there, but instead they're going, here's my budget. How can I still create maximum impact? And they're looking to you for a recommendation. And it creates a totally different relationship with your clients. And all of a sudden you're having these incredible conversations with customers and clients about seasonal availability and alternatives and what they can ignore off of their wish list and what they don't need to worry about and how much they can trust you. And it just creates such a magical experience for you to be able to create the work that you've always wanted to create. And it all comes back to understanding the power of building a magnetic brand. Because these are also the exact customers that are going to be willing to pay a premium for your work. No questions asked. And secret number four, using your systems to sell. And I didn't understand the power or even appreciate the power of having systems in place for freeing up your time and your energy. But even more than that, the real revolution came for me when I saw how much it helped me conserve my creativity and conserve my focus. If you've ever heard of the concept of decision fatigue, this is where this comes in to play. Because as a human, you only have a certain amount of capacity to be able to make a certain number of decisions every single day. So if you're spending that time and energy making decisions about what to write back to this client or how to respond when a customer ghosts you or what to post on Instagram, it means you're actually taking away from the energy and the focus and the creativity that you could have on any given floral design. And I don't know about you, but I'm like, okay, how can I make sure that I can serve as much of my energy from a marketing and a sales and an admin point of view so that I can conserve my energy and my focus for the part that I love the most, the actual creating and the design and the construction of the arrangements. So this is where your systems are going to come into play. And I know when I say the word systems, lots of florists are like, oh, okay, well, what app or what software should I have? I'll be like, don't even worry about it. I am probably 
probably one of the very few floral designers out there that's like, hey, I'll tell you exactly what software you need and when, but before you even have a system in place, if it's not documented in a Google Doc, if you don't have your own Google Sheet, if you don't have a checklist, if something's not created within a free version first, then the minute that you buy the software, it's going to compound the issue and you're going to get so overwhelmed in terms of implementation that you're never even going to do the thing. And then it's going to turn into a colossal waste of money, which erodes away at your bottom line, eats into your profitability. And then if you're like me, you'll start to beat yourself up over the fact that you should be doing that work and you can't be bothered. And oh my gosh, can I just go run and hide? Anyway, again, just speaking from personal experience. However, I am a huge advocate of get your system sorted with a free version of software. You can go so far <laughs> with a Google form, Google Docs, and a Google Sheet. I would even dare say, until you get to the point where you're navigating more than 100 inquiries a year, don't even worry about having a CRM system. When I tell my clients about my system for managing our inventory, I was like, uh, it's a Google Sheet. And in actual fact, it's a printed out Google Sheet, so it's done by pen and paper. Now, I know that's very archaic, and a lot of you are gonna be like, uh, that's impossible, Kathleen. It's fine. If you like your system, you stick with your system. But but if you are finding the software frustrating and inundating, skip the software and just ask yourself, what would this look like if it was easy? Is there a free way that I can solve this problem to at least build the momentum and get things going before I start paying for a piece of software to solve the problem? Because you will just compound the problem if you haven't solved the original problem. But relying on things like checklists, templates, copy and paste, online forms, like these are the things that are going to help you conserve your energy so that you can pour your creativity back into the flowering side of the business. Secret number five, confidence in sales. And this is a really big one. You might have heard that phrase before that confidence sells. It's what happens when you interact with any really good real estate agent or any really good like car salesperson or anybody who's really good at selling. The first thing that you feel from them is their confidence. And here's the thing, <laughs> like being so transparent and so open with you guys, I'm like, I am not a naturally born confident person. And I know you look at me and you're like, but Kathleen, like the way that you show up on camera. Yeah, all learned. 100% simply a skill that I have learned to master. So here's the thing, and this is the magical ingredient when it comes to floristry. Right now, your customers think peonies are available 52 weeks of the year. I'll also tell you, and I know many of you have had this experience as well, that your customers cannot tell the difference between a carnation and a rose. But I swear to you, like if you remember that your customers at this moment in time cannot tell the difference between a carnation and a rose, it's gonna help you shift into a more confident mindset because you and I can tell the difference between a carnation and a rose, and that's enough. Remembering, you're not comparing yourself to the most experienced and sophisticated floor out there. You're comparing yourself to your customers and right now they don't know the difference between a rose and a carnation and they think peonies are available 52 weeks of the year. They have come to you because they already see you as the expert. So embody expert energy. And when you can build up your self-confidence and you can remember in order for you to label yourself an expert, you only need to know 20% more than the person that you're talking to. So as long as you know that peonies aren't available 52 weeks of the year and you know the difference between a carnation and a rose, you are like 15 steps ahead. And that mindset shift, that energy shift for you is going to make such an incredible difference. Remembering your customers are coming to you because they see you as an expert. They don't know what they don't know and they're looking for guidance and they're looking for somebody to help them. So whether that is you helping them navigate the overwhelm of Pinterest or whether that's you jumping on Google to figure out when amaranthus is actually in season or whether that's you jumping on Google to learn that it's not anemone, it's an enemy. <laughs> right? It, like literally, these were all things that I did. But building confidence and belief in yourself will make selling so much easier. And then I will also say, go back to the previous secret because it's your systems that will help you shortcut the experience and really understand how to feel confident. Because if you have the right templates and systems in place, then your confidence comes easy. Number six, marketing strategy is non-negotiable. Early on, I literally thought the game was about getting more followers, posting beautiful pictures on Instagram, having the cutest shop front, and having your work featured in some magazine. And the reality is none of those things actually helped me 
make money as a florist. And this is where one of those like questioning your assumptions and asking yourself, am I crystal clear on the strategy that I'm following? So if you're posting to Instagram, do you understand why you're posting? If you're revamping your online catalog, do you have a very specific goal in mind? If you're optimizing your website for SEO, is the mission clear to you? So this idea of really questioning your to-do list, questioning your tactics and going, okay, are my tactics leading to a very clear and purposeful strategy? Do I understand the problems that I'm trying to solve in my business? Or do I feel like I'm kind of on the hamster wheel in reactive mode and just doing the things for the sake of doing the things and hoping that one day these things will work themselves out? That experience has been my experience of being on the hamster wheel and wishing and hoping that one day they will work themselves out. So all you have to do is pause long enough, quite literally take a breath, make a cup of tea and ask yourself, what is the right strategy for me to follow in my business to grow, to get my business in front of the right people and really start making money. And once you understand the right strategies to follow, then the tactics become easy and it becomes so rinse and repeat, so simple, so copy and paste that showing up consistently, really moving the needle in your business becomes so much easier and you will start to see results so much faster. So remember, if you're ever feeling stuck, if you feel like you're throwing everything at your website and you feel like you're throwing everything at your social media, if you feel like you're over investing in marketing and it's just not moving the needle in your business, just ask yourself, am I clear on the strategy that I need to be following? Number seven, get your financials in order. I truly believe that one of the sexiest things that a flower boss can do is be on top of their P&L. Now I know it's not glamorous and I know nobody else is going to walk around being like, oh hey, look at me and my p and I mean, I will. You and I can have this whole conversation because that's exactly what I would do because I think it's so powerful for you to have complete clarity and understanding and you're on top of what's happening in your business because I want you to think of your profit and loss statement in your business simply like a health check and this whole idea of if you were going to put yourself on some sort of fitness regime the most important thing that you could do in the beginning is understand where you're at and then you'll set yourself a target you'll set yourself a goal you'll probably hire a professional you'll hire a coach you'll put a plan in place to make it happen and uh, yes I did shower myself in shame for multiple years years before I finally sat down on that random Tuesday afternoon and said, okay, if something's got to give, this is a me problem. I need to get to work. So understanding where you're at in your business is the single most helpful thing when the goal is profitability. You already know you're not making money. So amazing. You don't need to shame yourself any further than the fact that you're not making money and you want to make more money. Great. <laughs> so good. The very first thing I want you to do is I want you to sit down and I want you to look at your P&L and I want you to identify where are the things not adding up? Is it that there isn't enough revenue coming in the door? Is it that you're overspending at the wholesalers? Is it that your staffing is completely out of whack? Is it that the ratio of your rent and your overhead is way higher than the proportion of sales that are coming in? Once you look at your P&L, the problem will jump out at you so fast and a problem identified is a problem half solved. So getting on top of your P&L is one of the most most empowering things that you can do in your business. So stop putting it off. <laughs> stop saying, I'll wait until the stars align. I'll stop waiting until you have time. It doesn't take very long. You already know that you're not making enough money or you already know that you want to make more money. So sit down with your PL, take control of it. Remember, you can Google all of the questions that you have. You can also ask chat GPT. So you don't even need to go out of your comfort zone <laughs> to get the answers to your questions. What an amazing time it is to be alive because we have access to Google and chat GPT so we can keep all of our shame and our self-doubt to ourselves before we even go and have a conversation with our accountant or before we even sit down and say, okay, what am I going to do about my plan to make more money? So getting your financials in order and really taking control of your money is one of the most important things you can do as a business owner. Secret number eight is build your community. Now I'm going to say I've actually realized over time that I think as floral designers and business owners, we need three different kinds of of communities. And the first one is going to be a family of other floral designers who are also business owners. And that could be something that you build online. That could be something where you have a completely remote relationship, but understanding that you're not the only ambitious, motivated, capable, incredibly intelligent human on the planet that wants to make money as a florist is really helpful. So go out of your way to build those relationships. And remember, they don't have to be in person. If you feel like I did, where it's like your local area of 
florists isn't the most supportive. In fact, they're incredibly standoffish and they're really secretive about everything. Jump online, <laughs> find yourself a community, join a membership, join a program, join a course of other ambitious, motivated florists so that you know that you're not the only one who's driven and committed and ready to dive into your own growth. In addition to building your business florist community, continue to invest in your own creativity. So whether you choose to go to workshops, whether you go to an afternoon session at the local flower shop, whether you go on a tour to the flower farm, whether you're taking online courses, but continue to feed your own creativity and your own love of flowers. This is something that took me a really long time to learn, but because we are literally turning our passion into profit, our love of flowers at times can start to wane. And if you can create your own creative habit, your own way to fuel your creativity yourself in your business, you're going to be able to skip past the burnout. You're going to be able to skip past the absolute exhaustion and the draining experience that is at times running a business. So making sure that you make time and you have a plan to pour back into you from a creative point of view is really important. And then the third thing I will say is I do think it's really important to have a local network of other business owners. Of course, in an ideal scenario, I would say they're also flower lovers, but building your own community of entrepreneurs is so important because most of us don't come from families where we sit down and we talk about entrepreneurship all the time, even though that's what you and I would love to do. But being able to have one or two other people in your area that you can sit down and geek out on business and personal development and mindset and digital marketing about does change the game because you and I walk around thinking we're the only ones. We must be the only ones on the planet that care about this stuff. <laughs> like looking at our family, looking at our other friends and going like, um, I don't really want to talk about the weather, but can we talk about this new prompt that I set up on chat GPT? Because it's amazing. <laughs> So this whole idea of having three different levels of your relationships, being part of ambitious, florist, motivated, business owners, profit focused group, super important fueling your own creativity, having relationships with other creatives, super important, and having a local network of other entrepreneurs, super helpful. Now, how you do this and what that looks like for you can be totally adaptable, but just know over time, I've learned that having those three tiers of support has been a game changer. And I know it's one of the reasons that I've been able to sustain this work for so long. And then number nine is invest in yourself and invest in your business. Whether it's learning new software where, whether it's learning how to level up your mindset, whether it's learning about marketing strategy, whether it's learning about hiring and team and scaling, whether you're investing in a coach, the more you invest in your own growth, personally and professionally, the faster your business will grow. Your business can only grow to the level that you grow. And I'll be the first to tell you that this whole experience of running a business is such a confronting roller coaster ride, but it's also so empowering and it's so healing because you have to navigate so much of your own personal self-doubt and uncertainty and hesitation. But on the flip side of that, your confidence, your vision, your impact that you get to create with your your business will be beyond your wildest imagination. So keep showing up, keep putting in the work and be really proactive with where you want to invest in yourself and invest in your business. And these nine secrets truly changed everything for me in my business. And I absolutely wish that somebody had sat me down early on in my floristry career to be like, hey, so this is what you need to know. These are the actual secrets to making money and being successful. Because at the end of the day, being a profitable, thriving business owner is a about way more than just creating beautiful designs. It's about building a business that you love. It's about getting clear on your vision and it's about making money. And I promise you, if I have figured out how to make it happen, then I know you can too. And if you want to get my help so that you can fast track your success, I'll leave the link in the description to my flower boss formula so that you can get immediate access to my step-by-step -step blueprint and you can fast track your growth, make more money, streamline your systems and your marketing and create the work Work that you've always wanted to create. And as always, I want to say thank you so much for being here. If anything in this video was helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my flower family. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, have the most amazing week and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.